In this talk, we present LMRelog, a direct method for accurate pulse estimation for relocalization based on the classical Levenberg Marquardt algorithm. In the last years, very strong direct SLAM approaches have been proposed. On the left, you can see direct sparse odometry by Jacob Engel et al. Compared to indirect methods, direct SLAM methods have three main advantages. They can utilize any image region with gradients and are not limited to corners or other key points. They do not have to rely on feature matching or RAMSEC, but instead directly estimate the pose from the available data. And on SLAM benchmarks, they are known to be more accurate. However, when given images like these, direct SLAM approaches struggle because of the lighting changes and because a good initialization is missing. In this work, we aim to improve the robustness of direct methods against lighting changes and large baselines while retaining the advantages on the right. This is useful for applications like long-term loop closure in a SLAM system or for relocalization. The task we address is the following. Given the images i and i' prime from different daytimes, we want to estimate the 6 degree of freedom pulse between them. This is done with direct image alignment using the Levenberg Marquardt algorithm. It gets the two images as input and also a sparse point cloud, in our case created by direct sparse odometry. Let's have a look at how direct image alignment works in general. The idea is to start with an initial solution for the rotation and translation, and with that we can project the points from the point cloud from one image to the other. If that solution is good, the pixels at these points should look the same or the brightness difference should be as small as possible. This is done for all points and the energy function is minimized using the Levenberg Marquardt algorithm. To make this work for images with strong lighting changes, we replace the images with multi-channel features created by our neural network. So if we look at the overview again, instead of passing the images into Levenberg Marquardt, we feed them into our LMNet which generates steep features which are used for the image alignment. These features are robust to lighting changes and also have a larger convergence space in the images, which improves the performance when the initialization is bad. Training LMNet works in a Siamese fashion with shared weights. For training, we propose a novel loss formulation, which we explain in the following. As training data, we use ground truth pixel correspondences. The advantage is that we have many training points for each image pair. To explain our loss formulation, we have to first take a closer look at how direct image alignment works. And we start with the classical Gauss-Newton algorithm. When minimizing this energy function, the Gauss-Newton algorithm builds a quadratic system consisting of the Hessian H and the gradient vector B. Using them, the update delta is computed by solving the normal equation. Gauss-Newton converges very quickly when close to the optimum, but it struggles when initialized further away. Therefore, for direct image alignment, usually the levenberg marquardt algorithm is used. It introduces the damping factor lambda, and the update formula is changed like this. Lambda works as an interpolation factor between Gauss-Newton and gradient descent, and is adapted on the fly. I'd like to show an example of the typical behavior. These points show the ground truth correspondence. In practice, we start with a slightly wrong solution for the pose, so the projected point position is also a couple of pixels away. Now in the beginning, lambda will be large and the algorithm behaves like gradient descent. After a couple of updates, the pose will get better and so will the point position. By now, lambda has decreased and the next updates are mostly Gauss-Newton steps and now the algorithm will converge quickly. Our novel loss formulation is inspired by this observation and we consider four cases for projected points. First, the point is already at the correct location. In that case, the algorithm should know that the solution is good, so the residual should be small. So we take the ground truth correspondence and say that the features at their location should be as similar as possible. Second, the point is an outlier then the residual should be large. To enforce this, we sample a random negative point across the whole image and say that the features at these positions should be further apart than a margin m. 
In practice, this is realized with a hinge loss. Third, the point is relatively far away, which is inspired by the orange point. We assume gradient descent and all we want is that the gradient should point in the right direction. For this, we sample a point in a relatively large vicinity of the ground truth, for example here. Then we compute the update for only this point, which is basically Lucas Kanade tracking. In this example, this yields the yellow point. Our loss function says that the distance to the correct solution after the update should be smaller than the distance before the update minus some delta. This means that we made progress. Again, this is realized with a hinge loss. Fourth, the point is very close, which is inspired by the red point. For this, we sample a point in a small vicinity around the correct solution. Here, we assume that the algorithm behaves like the Gauss-Newton method and we want to converge quickly with subpixel accuracy. To enforce this, we compute the Gauss-Newton loss, which we have proposed in our previous work GNNet. It works directly on the Gaussian probabilities computed by the Gauss-Newton algorithm, which makes it optimal for this use case. Notice how all these four loss components use a different way to sample the points involved. All loss terms serve a different purpose inspired by the LM algorithm and in our results we show that all of them are necessary to obtain optimal results. Using this loss formulation, the features generated by LMNet significantly improve the robustness of direct image alignment against bad initializations. But for large baselines, sometimes an initialization is still necessary. For this we propose core postnet. It gets the two images as an input and directly regresses the 6 degree of freedom post which we use to bootstrap the image alignment. Core postnet is not very accurate, but it is quite robust which makes it a perfect fit for combination with LMNet. We found that simply concatenating the images and feeding them into a standard network doesn't work well in our case because of the large baselines. Therefore, we utilize the correlation layer proposed by Rocco et al. It is known to improve the performance of optical flow estimation networks for large baselines, but to our knowledge, it has not been applied to pose estimation before. We evaluate our method on the relocalization tracking benchmark and we first show an ablation study for the loss formulation. Compared to the contrastive loss, adding the gradient descent loss term improves the robustness. When instead adding the Gauss-Newton loss, we see that the accuracy is improved, but the robustness not as much. Only when adding all loss terms together, we see a large improvement in both robustness and accuracy, which confirms our derivations. On the test data of the benchmark, we compare to the closest work, which is GNNet. GNNet also improves direct image alignment with features, but in contrast to this work, it is not optimal for levenberg marquardt Thus, we see a large improvement compared to it. This improvement is only due to our novel loss formulation. All other parts are the same. When adding our proposed core postnet, there's another large boost in performance. For more comparisons, including on Oxford and against feature-based methods, please have a look at our paper. Lastly, we provide a qualitative relocalization demo to showcase how our approach can be applied in practice. Here we relocalize a snowy sequence against a map taken in sunny condition. You can see the point cloud of the map in white and the point cloud of the current sequence in blue. They align very well, which shows that the relocalization is accurate. In the bottom row you can see the current image, the closest map image, the current features, the closest map features and the sparse depth map. Especially near the trees and the lane markings, you can see that the point clouds align well. For time reasons, we have to now skip to the end of the experiment. The full video can be watched on our webpage.